months have been interesting to say the least. Overnight our habits and our daily routines were just turned upside down. I'm sure you know the feeling. I didn't realize how much I was a creature of habit until those habits were stripped away until I couldn't literally do them. Our routine of Tuesday grocery shopping, of going swimming and then going to the library on Thursdays, well, we haven't done that since March. And honestly, it was 15 weeks from the onslaught of quarantine and isolation to the next time I stepped foot in a grocery store. For us, it was easier to opt to get our groceries delivered, but even that proved challenging, especially as a large family. One thing that we found to be incredibly hard during this transition was just the limits on things in the beginning and the lack of food. Um, we are lucky, we are privileged that we were able to pay for a grocery delivery service so I didn't have to go to the grocery store, but delivery comes with its own issues because you never really know what you're going to get and you also can't choose something else if they don't have that item. So something like bagels, right? They had a limit of two bread products per order sometimes. And if I bought bagels, a package of bagels is six bagels. That's two meals for our family. And that's if I even got them. Since we were, you know, at home more often, I decided to challenge myself to only consuming the bread products that I made or that my family made. I did this for a couple reasons. One, because I was frankly bored in lockdown, right? Like, what am I supposed to do? Do I take four kids out into the world of uncertainty? Do we, you know, what, what do you do? Frankly, I got bored and I needed to find something to distract myself. So I took up bread baking. <laughs> people don't know how to make bread because so many people were reliant on the bread that was on the shelves and I didn't want to take that away from them when I knew that I had the skill to make bread and I had the time to make bread. <laughs> At first it was hard. Um, not all recipes are created equal, right? So some of the recipes I tried were terrible just because the recipe was terrible. We had one that it was like, when I was adding the salt to the recipe, I was like, this seems like it's gonna be way too much salt, but I'm gonna trust the recipe. Yeah, it 
it was. Trust your intuition. If you think it's way too much salt, trust your intuition because that was a failed loaf of bread. But a lot of the bread fails that I had were just cosmetic. You know, maybe they didn't look the prettiest. I mean, sometimes they were overcooked, sometimes they were dry. Uh, I learned a lot about the hydration ratio of bread. We experimented with creating sourdough starters, using different types of flours. I mean, we had fun with it. Um, but honestly, I think the hardest thing that I made in terms of this foray into baking bread was bagels. They're quite intimidating. It's not even so much that the act of making bagels was difficult, but it was convincing myself that I could. So the hardest part for me about all of this bread making is literally just being prepared. Especially if you're making, say, sourdough, which takes 24 hours, um, sometimes even longer, depending on how long you let it ferment and the process that you use. If you want to start making sourdough and you haven't even started your starter, you need to think you've got at least a, a week before you have an active starter. If you keep your starter in the fridge, then you think you have to take the starter out, you have to feed it, you have to let it become happy and bubbly before you can even start the baking process. So learning to be more gentle with myself and learning to slow down and approach life a little differently, being more mindful, planning a bit more. It's weird because you think that, oh, we're not going anywhere, we don't have anything to do, you don't have to plan as much, but when you, when you think about baking breads, you actually have to plan more in order for that bread to be ready when you want to eat it. Like if you want to make a nice crusty artisan loaf to go with the stew, you might need to start that bread the night before. So I had to really start planning ahead and being aware of our food consumption and when we were planning on consuming things. just my impulsiveness. I found that I found that I would be wanting to make sandwiches or just you know have a slice of bread in the morning and then realizing like oh I don't have any bread and if I want to make bread for breakfast I either have to do it the night before or expect a late breakfast right if I start my bagels at seven o'clock in the morning, they then need to rise for an hour, then I need to boil them, then I need to bake them. So even starting at 7 a.m., we'll maybe have breakfast by nine. But one thing that I learned from this whole three months in lockdown was to be kind to myself, was to be gentle with myself. So often, we think that we're going to be perfect on the first try.
So I did, we'll get a new recipe and we'll just make it and just assume it's going to be perfect. There's different things you have to take into account. For me, we live at altitude, we live in a very dry climate. So figuring out the proper temperatures and the proper time to bake things is actually quite critical for where we are and not taken into account for most recipes unless I'm looking at a local recipe or a recipe for someone with a similar climate. But then it's also just, when I started making bread, I didn't know what the proper texture felt like or looked like. I've been doing it for, what, 18 weeks now? And I, I figured it out. I can now eyeball the amount of flour that I need in my bagel recipe, which is good because I mean, when it is a rainy day, we need less, um, we need less moisture in the actual dough because of the moisture in the air. If it's a dry day, like a really dry day, if I put in the amount of flour that I put in on a rainy day, my bagels will be so dry and heavy and just not nice. Um, so I've learned to see what the dough should look like. And a bagel dough looks different than a pizza dough, which looks different than a sourdough bread. Um, and all of these things just come with trial and error. And so one of the most important things for me was to just be not be critical of myself, to not be afraid to make mistakes, to not stress when something didn't turn out. Ultimately, I think this bread baking endeavor over the past few months has really taught me the value of slowing down and being mindful in the moment. Like I said, you have to be able to feel the dough. You have to be able to see what it looks like. Um, that is, to me, more important than the recipe. And that only comes with time and with practice and with slowing down. If you rush through a recipe, then you can get to the end result, but have you learned and absorbed everything that you could along the way? So I have always tried to be mindful in the moment, especially when it comes to raising my children and how we approach schooling and education, but it took it to a new level when you had kids who hadn't left the house besides going for a walk around the block with the dog. Um, when you have kids who can't go to the playground because the playgrounds are shut down, who can't go see their friends, you have to be even more mindful in the moment of their emotions and of your own emotions. So when they were helping me in the kitchen, not only did I have to be mindful of what we were making, but I had to be mindful of how I was talking to them and how I reacted when, you know, the milk spilled or when the flour went everywhere. You know, emotions were running high and emotions are still running high. We are beginning a new phase of normal, but what that normal is, is difficult to explain. We're kind of still in this transition period. I mean, it's now July, but I don't know what the summer is going to look like. I don't know what the fall is going to look like. It's all up in the air and it's all confusing. But one thing I do know 
is that I have learned many valuable skills over this quarantine period. I've taught my children how to bake bread, and I've taught myself how to be a better mother and a better person in the process. Has it been glamorous? No. Has it been messy? Yes. <laughs> but we can only do our best. And that, I think, is the most important message that I can share and the most important lesson that I learned this past few months is just to be your best. And we just have to remember to try our best, to be our best, even if our best means barely staying afloat.